You know, being in Kansas City, we are so fortunate to have a window to history. The Negro Leagues were founded here and made waves through baseball and society, eventually sparking major change. And though the people and places are long gone, their legacy lives on. Thanks to a major effort in our community, one that continues to this day. It, we've seen a lot of work put into the site where the old municipal stadium once stood, the home of the Kansas City Monarchs. I stopped by recently ahead of a very special event later this week. I'm here at Monarch Plaza, 22nd in Brooklyn in Kansas City, Missouri, a place filled with history with a man who has made it his life's mission to preserve that history, Bob Kendrick with the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. Thanks so much for joining me here. Uh, this is a, a sacred spot when it comes to just sports in general, but the Negro Leagues especially. For people who don't know, explain the significance of where we're standing. Yeah, now we're standing at the corner of 22nd and Brooklyn, the site of old Municipal Stadium. Of course, before it was Municipal Stadium, it was Muehlbach Field, it was Rupert Stadium, it was Blues Stadium, and then eventually Municipal Stadium. But you're right, there's been a lot of history, a lot of sports history made at this very site but no one made more history here than the legendary Kansas City Monarchs who called this site home for so, so many years. And so our city has always seen great baseball. And at the heart of it were the Kansas City Monarchs. And then once you take Monarch Plaza and you turn it into this amazing tribute, which I know is being renovated, it was a little sad to see it kind of fall by the wayside a little bit, but you're, you're really working to, to bring it back around. Uh, later this week, I know the crews are going to be in reinstalling the signs. There are already a couple here now. What does it mean for you to see that uh, brought back to luster? Well, for us, it's about community pride and how can we galvanize and create a spirit of community. And that's a big part of what the Negro Leagues baseball represents. It's been that way from the onset. When we anchored at historic 18th and Vine, way back in 1990, you have to remember there was nothing else at 18th and Vine. The, the, it, it had been basically left abandoned. And here comes this fledgling museum known as the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum that's saying we're going to build this museum but we're also going to be a leader in this community and help resurrect and revitalize what was once a very proud, prominent African-American community. Well, this is part of what we are supposed to be doing. And so we take great pride and ownership in finding ways to galvanize the community and the greater community. And we've seen, uh, we know the Evergy crews were here. Yes. You, you won the grant. So yes. thanks to all the fans Absolutely. of the Negro Leagues Baseball Everybody Museum. Everybody who voted for the Negro Leagues <laughs> Baseball Museum. Right. And so uh, tell us what we'll see later on this week, because we know you've got a big event coming up. Yeah, no, we'll see the return of the kiosk. And the kiosks represent not only Negro Leagues history, because they're a beautiful kiosk that represents Satchel Page and Buck O'Neill and a very special kiosk new to the plaza honoring Jackie Robinson, the 75th anniversary of Jackie Robinson's breaking of the color barrier. But you also have to remember the Chiefs made history here as well. And there's a kiosk of Bobby Bell and Otis Taylor and Willie Lanier, Amos Otis, John Mayberry from the Royals, and John Wyatt, who was one of the black players who played for the Kansas City A's before they became the Oakland A's. And, and so from an African-American perspective, there's been a lot of great sports history made on this site, but also the Kansas City Blues, who were a New York Yankees farm system, played here as well. And, and so it's important that we say this, and, and I think the community will embrace this, but the tourists who come into Kansas City who want to know where the Monarchs play. They come to this site, and now they're going to be able to see a beautifully redone plaza. And real quick, there's a, a big event coming up on Saturday where there'll actually be a walk from here to the museum, right? We call it the March of the Monarchs. Great. We're honoring the 1942 world champion Kansas City Monarchs, Buck O'Neill's favorite team, and we will gather a group, as many people as we can, to meet at the museum, come over to 22nd in Brooklyn, and then we're going to march back to 18th and Vine in similar fashion in which they used to do it when the Monarchs would open the season and there would be a marching band and 17,000 plus standing room only to see the great Kansas City Monarchs play. Well, it's going to be so exciting to see that. Bob Kendrick, thank you so much for your time and, and good luck this weekend. Oh, thank you so much, Cody. 
The rededication of Monarch Plaza begins with the March of the Monarchs Saturday at 11 a.m. at 22nd in Brooklyn. A special walk and celebration goes from there to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum on 18th Street with live entertainment, food trucks and more. You name it, they've got it. For more info, head to NLBM.com.